Welcome back, everybody. I'm the Dependent Fanatic, and today we're talking Fresno State Week 1 for the University of Michigan. It's a preview and prediction here coming up for you. I respect every opponent. I'm not going to overlook them. I hope the team doesn't either, because in Week 2 is Texas, as most of you probably already know. So, Fresno State's Week 1, they went 9-4 and four last season. They started hot with an opening win over Purdue and then a tear, but they lost the last three of their regular season games before winning their bowl game uh, versus lowly New Mexico State. Uh, head coach Jeff Tedford is 45-22 and 22 in five seasons at Fresno State with a little gap in between there where he took time off because of health reasons, came back and... I think he has three 10-win seasons there and the nine-win season last year. Fresno opens and ends their regular season versus Big Ten teams, Michigan and UCLA. Besides Michigan, I think this team in Fresno can win every other game on their schedule. Can win, but will they? <laughs> Probably not, but it should be a really good year for Fresno State as we dive in to their roster. If you want to see Michigan's roster, I did a whole 30 minute almost video on Michigan and the National Title Contender Series. So you can just go over there and look at what we have coming back uh, if you have not already. So, but uh, Mikey Keen is their quarterback. He went 283 for 422 last season, which is a 67% clip for 2,976 yards. A 7.5, uh, 7.1 average is all. Uh, so a dink and dunk guy, but he did have 24 touchdowns to 10 interceptions. That number is high. Uh, he is not a runner, <laughs> though. Negative 136 yards on 19 uh, sacks last year. At running back, though, you go pretty deep. Uh, four good ones, and starting with an almost 1,000-yard rusher last season, Malik Sherrod, a redshirt senior. It's a theme of this team. Mikey Keene is a redshirt junior. There's a lot of redshirts and a lot of upperclassmen on this team. Um, but Sherrod had 172 carries last season for 966 yards, a 5.6 average. He had nine rushing touchdowns. He also had 44 receptions for 260 yards, which is a 5.9 average per reception. And he had a receiving touchdown. Behind him, Elijah Gilliam, a redshirt senior as well, had 95 carries last year, 300. 97 yards, 4.2 average, uh, five rushing touchdowns. He had 11 receptions, though, as well, uh, for 120 yards and a 10.9 average, and he had a touchdown. Backing him up, Jonathan Arsenault is a redshirt junior who had six rushes for 18 yards, a three average is all, two receptions, for 15 yards, a uh, 7.5 average. But the redshirt freshman this upcoming season, Devin Rivers, had 12 carries last season as well for 44 yards, but only a 3.7 average is what that makes that. So uh, they have people. They have people. Tight end, though, not so much. Jake Boust is back as a redshirt senior, but he had to apparently sit behind a lot of people. Uh, because no one behind him has any stats either. He had four catches for 30 yards, a 7.5 average, and one touchdown. You have some good wide receivers. At the X position, Josiah Freeman has a redshirt junior who had 19 catches for 249 yards, which is a 13.1 average, and one touchdown. He's 6'3", so a big, tall possession receiver. Uh, backing him up is Emery Edwards, a redshirt junior, a uh, senior. He uh, he had 240 yards in 2019. I'm not sure quite why he had he didn't get any stats uh, 
since then, but he is back according to ourlads.com. So, uh, and is in second place. Now, Tim Greer backs hit them up. Uh, he had eight catches for 98 yards last year, uh, 12.3 average and one touchdown. He's a junior this upcoming season. But at the wide receiver Z and the wide receiver H, no depth, but you have a proven starter. Jalen Moss at the Z position, uh, redshirt sophomore, 55 catches. 706 yards, 12.8 average, and six touchdowns. Wide receiver H, uh, Magdalena, a senior, had 47 catches, 509 yards, 10.8 average, and three touchdowns, but he also had a carry for 33 yards last season. All of those players are behind the real skill players. <laughs> I loved how Jim Harbaugh said, yeah, the offensive line are skilled players. <laughs> it's true. Uh, they have a great O-line here at Fresno State. Five, basically five returning starters. At left tackle, Kingsley Ugwa, a redshirt senior, appeared in three games. If it's not him, then Penwright, uh, Torian Penwright, a redshirt senior as well, Appeared in nine games last season. Our lads had him first. Uh, both are, looks like they're going to be uh, in the mix at left tackle. Left guard, Osmar Velez is a redshirt senior. And he was a starter last season. Appeared in 13 games. Center, Mose Vavau, a senior, true senior. He was a starter. Appeared in all 13 games. Right guard, Julian Palendo is a redshirt senior, uh, started in all 13 games. By, uh, Braylon Nelson at right tackle is a senior, and he was a starter last year as well. And like I said, backups, Torian Penright at left tackle. Left guard, you got Campbell uh, McHarg is a redshirt junior. And then at center, you have Matai Bell, redshirt sophomore. Uh, who, uh, they all have some pretty good size for the Mountain West. Uh, at their backup positions. Right guard Panafatu Kamuda is a junior. He's a transfer from Fresno Community College, Fresno State Community College. And then right tackle Roland Fullwood is a redshirt junior. So experience depth at the offensive line. You have weapons, you got a quarterback that's capable. Let's look at the defense. Um, at defensive end, I'm just going to mix both sides in here because you only really only have one proven one. Uh, is Devo Bridges, a redshirt senior. Had 51 tackles last season, three and a half sacks, one interception, and one pass defensed. Charles Remlinger, a redshirt senior, had 10 tackles and one sack last season. Sion Noah is a junior, had six tackles, two sacks last season. And Jazan Jax is a redshirt sophomore who had 12 tackles last season. At D tackle, uh, left D tackle specifically, Jacob Holmes, a junior, 17 tackles, five sacks, one forced fumble and one fumble recovery um, as a sophomore. He's a junior now. Kavika Baumgartner is a senior now. He had 13 tackles as a junior. Ezra Christensen is a senior now. 10 tackles, half a sack, and Merhadi Zepra is a redshirt sophomore who had seven tackles and a fumble recovery there in the middle at right D tackle. Uh, Gabriel Lightfoot is a junior. He had 20 tackles last season. Dupree Mendoza, a junior, had 10 tackles and two and a half sacks last season. At Will Linebacker, you got a great one. Uh, Malachi Langley, a redshirt senior, 84 tackles and a sack. Jackson, uh, Phoenix Jackson backs him up. Redshirt junior had 33 tackles, one sack, one interception, and one pass breakup. He might move to the middle linebacker maybe. Uh, uh, he's got more uh, experience and, well, not more experience because <laughs> that middle linebacker 
Well, let's finish up, Will. Uh, Tasavi Namara is a senior, had 14 tag on the sack. So, <laughs> depth, experience, all across the board on this team. Middle linebacker, Tasavi Namara, a senior, had 14 tackles and one sack. And then backing him up, another senior had 14 tackles and one pass breakup. So not the numbers you want coming back, not the returning production, but they, like Michigan, have players that have sat behind people and I have waited their turn. At, in the secondary, there was like four names I could find. Uh, if I'm missing anyone, let me know, Fresno State fan or any any fan that pays attention to Fresno State, let me know. Left corner, you got Julian Neal, Richard Jr., who had nine tackles and one pass breakup. Jakari Embry is a transfer from either the Fresno State Community College or it was like the uh, West, Grand West, still in uh, the state. Um, that was kind of a lower classification as well, but he had 46 tackles last season, two sacks and one forced fumble. At right corner, uh, Al Zillion Hamilton. Al Zillion Hamilton. It's awesome name. <laughs> Redshirt Jr. had th 31 tackles, two interceptions, and eight pass breakups last season. We got to watch out for that guy. And Cam Lockridge is a senior. Backing him up, coming back, 12 tackles, one interception, and one pass right up. All right. I built them up. Now let's tear them down. Friends don't let friends be state fans, and Fresno State is one of those teams. All right. With Texas in week two, though, for Michigan. This is the perfect opener for us. Uh, Fresno is an experienced older team that has great talent along both lines. Fresno also has an above average quarterback and weapons uh, who, who is also good in all of these areas, but better, Texas. So it's a perfect opener for Michigan. How will Michigan approach this game? Well, I remember last year when everyone wanted to see J.J. sling it around the yard in that week non-conference we had, and he didn't. They didn't let him. Uh, but he turned out to be okay, and so did Michigan. I mean, he went 10th overall. Numbers don't always matter. It's the wins. So how will we approach this? I think it'll be a little bit different this year because Fresno is a better program than those three were. Uh, Michigan will run, but I expect more passing with a looming Texas game. Uh, we have to be able to prove we can do that. Um, or maybe we know we can and we just run up Fresno State's throat, but I don't think it's going to be that simple against Fresno State. I think we will have to pass the ball at, during, uh, at certain moments to beat Fresno State in this team. So who cares if you put things on tape? That just means... The opponents have more to prepare for and work on uh, in the uh, week that they have, meaning Texas. So I, I think it's good. Uh, where was I? <laughs> <coughs> Michigan will run. But I, ex uh, I expect, the, like I said, the passing. Now, who cares if you put things on tape? We did that. <laughs> Sorry. If so, this means opponents have more to prepare for, and I think it gives Michigan. If the more you put on tape, they're gonna expect you to do some of that, right? And then you can do wrinkles off that and catch them in the chicken coop, so to speak. If Orgy is the quarterback, then there will be a couple of deep shots downfield, of course. Uh, my here's my prediction: Fresno State is going to try and run versus Michigan because they have to, and it won't work, which will force them to pass. Uh, and the all line is good, like I said, full of seniors, experience, depth. But Michigan will break through eventually, and Michigan should try everything offensively. I expect they will. 
uh, getting multiple touchdown passes and touchdown runs in this game is how I think it's going to go quarter by quarter. Uh, first quarter, Michigan, it's going to be 7-3. to three. You know, Michigan's always a slow starter in the first quarter. And then the second quarter, we pour it on with two more touchdowns, 21-3. to three. Uh, Third quarter, two more touchdowns, 35-3. to three. Maybe, uh, I think Fresno State gets to 10. It's not going to be like everyone who we held under single digits last year until week seven or whatever. Uh, they'll get 10 in this game, but I think it'll be in the fourth quarter when we start to play some of our backups like we did uh, in, the, in the games we blew people out last season. So DraftKings line is 20 and a half right now. I'd pick the over for sure. Michigan will win their 16th straight game. Their 1,005th all time. 42 to 10 versus Fresno State. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Hit the like button, please. Remember to subscribe if you have not, because there will be more content coming out. Texas 1 won't be at until after this game is played, <laughs> the preview and prediction. I will do uh, preseason predictions for each team in every conference, Power 4 conference. And then I will do a 12-team playoff prediction in the preseason before uh, the season starts. So stay tuned for all of that. If you're wondering, Texas has Colorado State week one before they play Michigan and Ann Arbor, uh, who went five and seven last year. So they won't get that kind of test that Michigan gets to get versus Fresno State, which uh, take that for what you will uh, as well. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. And go blue.